Hi, I'm Avery. And I'm Lily. And welcome back to From the Closet. Um, today we're covering a movie about a talking mouse who goes on an adventure. Uh, that's right, we are covering The Rescuers. <laughs> no. Uh, the Great Mouse Detective? Uh, not quite. Stuart Little. Why is there so many mouse movies? <laughs> Ratatouille. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you saw by the time, we're totally covering Detective Pikachu. Ah, uh, yes, Detective Pikachu. Otherwise known as Deadpool Cross Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because Ryan Reynolds is Deadpool and voices Pikachu. Yeah. So, uh, this movie was like... Leading up to it, I thought this movie was going to be a complete disaster. I think Everyone most people did. Oh, it's going to be a complete disaster. It's like, it's a live action movie based on a game that was not very good. <laughs> I was like, uh, I'm not expecting this to be good. So, like, part of me wanted to go see it in theaters, but then, like, I only ever go see movies in theaters with. My dad, I very rarely ever go to the theaters alone, yeah. and he's not a Pokemon fan, so he wouldn't go. Um, so I just didn't see it in theaters. I saw it quite a bit later. But yeah, um, actually, before we get into like summarizing shit, uh, spoilers for Detective Pikachu, the movie, this. not the game, because I don't really care. Um <laughs> well, probably there's gonna spoilers be... for the game. I don't know if the plot um, interplays. I don't know if there's any there. streaming. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's any streaming services where you can watch this movie, but uh, there will be a link below. <laughs> there will be a link below to buy it or rent it if you want. <laughs> yeah, um, I specific at least when I was gonna be watching it, I know there was no streaming services available. There could have changed, and. I can't look it up because, well, I have no internet on my computer right now. Yeah, that's a shame. Oh, well. But, yeah. Uh, funnily enough, we are extremely not caught up on recordings. We are recording this episode, what day is it? Friday. It, it is yeah, yeah, okay, it's Friday. We're recording this episode three days before it's supposed to release. <laughs> and we're we still have the second thing tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, then we gotta record tomorrow for another episode coming out on Tuesday. Because guess what? Tomorrow you guys are getting our free movie of the month for December, which is Back to the Future Part Two. <laughs> we're doing all three back back to back three months. As as long as part three stays available. They can only hope. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, so, fuck. I gotta remember their names. What were their names? Uh, you might be shit. A I, I, I remember... <laughs> I remember, like, specifically thinking about this because I didn't want to forget their names. And now I've forgotten them. I think the girl's name was, like, Lucy? I mean, it just replaced all of the... It is a bit of stereotypical. We can just... Yeah, Pikachu, main character, main character's crush. That's it. <laughs> oh, and yeah, Psyduck. I, yeah, I know the dad's name was Harry. Um, As, yeah, I remember that. <clears throat> So, at, at, before we get into this, um, a lot of video game movies don't really work well. Because in a video game, you know, it, it feels like you're actually in it, right? And when yeah. it's turned into a movie, you kind of lose that. Except yeah, Jeff. <laughs> the, except this movie, which I felt like I was in the movie the entire time. I wanted all these Pokemon to jump out of the screen. Like, this felt like if Pokemon was in real life. <laughs> like, yeah, it kind of did. Like, it was so okay. immersive that I was like, this. if Pokemon was in real life, I would totally believe this is how it would look. 
Bulbasaur. <laughs> just, just, just Bulbasaur. That Ludicolo one was funny, and I often imitate the Ludicolo. <laughs> like, literally, anytime somebody asks me for something, sometimes I just go, Ludicolo! <laughs> <laughs> The mime, the, the whole section with Mr. Mime was hilarious, too. Yeah, but um, I love the side talk, especially with the interaction with uh, Pikachu. Yeah, Lucy's side talk was just fantastic. And by the way, I did look it up just now. Their names were Lucy and Tim. <laughs> I was basically like, oh, you remember their name. Finally. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. Uh, basically, uh, also, I really like how early on in the movie, uh, we have this scene where, uh, Tim is trying to catch a Cubone, and they reference Cubone's, like, dex entry, where it supposedly wears the skull of its dead mother, which doesn't really work, by the way, because one female Cubone or Marowak can produce an endless amount of Cubone, and they can't all be wearing the skull of their dead mother, and they're born with that skull. Sorry, that really does not make sense, but... <laughs> no, it was born with a... Um, anime revenge sequence. Oh my god. <laughs> my entire... Cubone's entire village was burnt down by one of his family members, and now he has to go off and uh, kill, kill that person. What are you on? <laughs> okay. Every anime effort, so, and also every drug effort. Um, basically, uh, after Tim fails at catching this Cubone, I think he received a call on his phone about... Um, his dad being dead. Yeah. And uh, he has to go to... Uh, damn it, I was talking about Avatar earlier, and now all I can think about is Republic City. So, Rhyme I City. Rhyme City, that was the name. Oh, yeah. Which is I remember it because it reminds me of freaking Mime City for whatever reason. Well, see, what it was reminding me of was Mr. Rhyme. The Pokemon from Gen 8, that's the evolution of Galarian Mr. Mime, which I know this couldn't have been the reference, because Detective Pikachu was a Gen 7 movie. Well, maybe uh, Mr. Rhyme was a reference to this city. Maybe. I don't know. I would be interested to find out, though. I mean, it doesn't seem like it just from looking at him. That um, is true. but Of course, you guys listening to the podcast can't really see him, but like... You probably already know what Mr. Rhyme looks like if you're listening to this episode. And if you don't, you can probably look it up. <laughs> if you're listening to this episode, you probably have an active internet connection right now. Look it up. We are not babysitting. <laughs> okay, but to be fair, I mean, I said it could be someone it, it could be someone with YouTube Premium and they downloaded this episode to listen to while they were offline. You never know. We're not sponsoring YouTube <laughs> Premium, actually. No, not fuck sponsor. YouTube. Instantly demonetized, even though it's not monetized in the first place. <laughs> YouTube is going to monetize us and demonetize us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, YouTube has put ads on some of my videos before, um, and I never got money on them. It, it just reminds then, me of, though, Patrick, you're fired. I don't even work here. Want a job? Sorry now. Oh, would I? You're fired. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I, I don't get it, YouTube. Why were you putting ads on my own videos? And to make it even worse, I have to sit through ads on my own videos. Oh, that's and I don't know if other so bad. <laughs> yeah, like, and I don't know if other creators have to deal with that. Like, having to sit through ads on their own videos. That seems a little ridiculous. But then again, YouTube also puts ads on first aid videos, which they really fucking shouldn't. No, just get YouTube Premium. That's their official response on uh, Twitter, by the way. 
Yeah, it is. It's like, what the hell, YouTube? Like, I know it's a bot response, but seriously? <laughs> but anyway, we kind of trailed off. We got to talk about Detective Pikachu. What? So That's Tim goes... Yeah, so Tim... Um, Tim goes to Rhyme City, um... Which, he, he's clearly not having a good time. Yeah, no, he's not, because he and his father didn't really have much of a relationship. He spent most of his time with his grandmother. Um, and honestly, it seems like the reason Tim and his dad didn't have much of a relationship is... Tim. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, because yeah, it feels like Tim didn't really give his father a chance yeah and i guess you know finding out you know he's dead or quote unquote dead you know, he never really got mad at me um meet him that much you know well i mean i i can want to say me he was in his no, life until there yeah he was in his life until like his mom died wasn't it cancer did they say that I'm not going to say that they confirmed it. They might have, but I'm not entirely sure. Though, for whatever reason, that kind of sounds right. Yeah, and it's like, um, can I just say, it's like really cool to have like a mixed-race protagonist in a Pokemon movie. Because I'm so used to the protagonist either being, like, the protagonist in Pokemon content either being Ash generic Asian guy or girl and or a customizable personality blank slate. It's like, mm. they're all I like <laughs> blank slates. <laughs> it's just like finally a solid protagonist in something like with a personality that isn't Ash. <laughs> Wait, Ash like, has a personality? I mean, he he has a personality. I'm not saying it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, um... I'm gonna say don't skip um, Lake Day. Ash skipped Intelligence Day. I mean... Especially yeah. Gen 5. And then sometimes, like, the anime has Ash lose battles just because... Because the writers decided that he should. <laughs> oh, Avery, you won't get this. But anyone who's played Cam Hearts, Ash has less intelligence than Sora in Drain Drop Distance. I've always heard that Sora's a dumb bitch, so... I mean, Sora really lost a lot of intelligence when going to Drain Drop Distance. But, yeah. um, It's kind of interesting that in other parts of... Uh, the world of Detective Pikachu, we know that, like, Pokemon trainers actually exist. But in this, um, like, in this one city in particular, Pokemon and humans are, like, literally partners, and there aren't supposed to be any Pokemon battles. Well, of course there's underground fight clubs. There's Oh, a, yeah. Yeah, there's underground fight clubs in real life. Why not Pokemon? Hey, hey, we can't talk about those. All right. You're not allowed. The first rule of Fight Club is you're not allowed to talk about Fight Club. I never mentioned anything about Fight Club, and now you just mentioned Fight Club. No, you mentioned it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, eventually, um, Tim goes to his dad's old apartment, discovers the room that, like, it, like, is looking around, finds this R gas um which suspiciously looks like a liquid until he opens it i so ha huh, it's not a liquid it's a gas yeah and um he opens a window and some pokemon start inhaling the gas and they go fucking crazy <laughs> some apoms i remember that yeah yes apoms and it's really nice that this movie didn't just stick to the original 151 Oh, yeah, it's really nice. Like, we get all the way up into Gen 7 with this movie, because uh, there's even some freaking Morellos at one point. Um, I, I think now it's a good time to say, because we're already in Rhyme City. This is a beautiful <laughs> movie. 
I will say that. Like, I'm just constantly starstruck when I'm watching this movie. Like, damn, that Pokemon looks so good. Wow, this looks so real. Yeah, and then, like, it is nice that, like, don't rely too heavily on Gen 1. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to make a movie this big, you have to include the original theme at some point. And they did. They did. Kind of. Yeah, they did, kind of. <laughs> Wait, wasn't the news station using it? I think it was. They were using a uh, score version of it, but then later you actually have Pikachu singing it. Like, what if that's the same Pikachu Ash has, Then, but this is the timeline where Ash's Pikachu left him? No. <laughs> No. Just no. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Apom go wild. Uh, and then, like, uh, he's wandering around, and uh, he starts hearing Pikachu rummaging through the apartment, and the Pikachu starts talking. Which is not normal for a Pikachu, by the way. Nope. And then it's like, um, like, uh, we later find out that only Tim can understand him. And initially it's thought of as, you know, being a, an effect of the R gas, but that doesn't really make sense because other characters get some of that breathed in as well. Um, and there's a lot of theories throughout the movie, which we finally understand why at the end, but yeah, but I mean, let's, I really let's get think, to uh, it um, when we get to that part. Yeah, so just about every character in this movie has a partner Pokemon. It's pretty cool that one of them has a Ditto, even if he's the bad guy. <laughs> I just, I'm just a little bit creeped out that Ditto can transform into people, and um... what? Well, I mean, it's done that in like the main series games too. Yeah, I just know what um, a certain part of the Pokemon community would do with that, and has already done with that. <laughs> uh, I have two yeah. scars on that. Yep. Uh, the Pokemon community definitely has its uh, weirdos. Very lewd. <laughs> Very lewd. <laughs> But, yeah, um, basically, uh, they then go off and, like, they then kind of set off a little bit because they realize that, uh, the Pikachu, like, is at, like, the, the Pikachu has no memories, but, um, knows he was Harry's partner. Harry's partner, um, caffeine addiction, um... That's knows it. he was Harry's partner, and, and, like, the Pikachu has come across Tim, who is obviously Harry's son, um, and, like, everybody thinks that the Pikachu is dead, and, you know, Pikachu's like, hey, if I'm not dead, Harry's not dead. I mean, Which, is... to be fair, that's not a very solid line of logic, and Tim doesn't really buy it either, but he's like... Yeah, I'll help you figure out your missing memories or whatever. <laughs> I mean, that is a kind of solid line of reasoning if it was in the same place at the same time. And, uh, I mean, the Pikachu doesn't know exactly how it got out of that. You know, well, crash. I mean, okay. Honestly, the best point that Pikachu has is that they never found a body. That is true. Yeah, they never found a body. Which had all these, like, all the clues, they just set up clues to the ending of this movie. And now we're going over them. It all makes sense now. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny. Um, but, like, well, you know, looking around, they, wait a minute, no. They stumbled, Tim stumbled into Lucy before that. Tim stumbled into Lucy before he even got into the apartment, right? Yeah, there was less 
significant. Well, I mean, I mean that's when it was introduced, but Lucy was just like more introduced as a crazy person, who crazy reporter. Yeah, annoying reporter lady. Yeah. Um, and and yeah, like she is kind of annoying through like a good bit of the movie. <laughs> She eventually gets less annoying and more fun. Um, <laughs> honestly, Tim is my favorite character in this movie. But, uh, just being choose, honest. She is my favorite. I, I don't know. I'm usually like really, really into side characters a lot of the time. Hmm. Um, but this is one of those times where I think the MC is my favorite character. So. I just love them. Um, dialogue that Pikachu gives. And I'll show. I'll tell you my favorite quote. I think or I share. You know, but everyone else, my favorite quote. When we actually get to it. <laughs> okay. Um. So I'm having a bit of trouble trying to remember, but uh, essentially, um, Tim tracks down. Wait, no, he doesn't go looking for Lucy, does he? He goes looking for um, the the mayor, right? I'm trying to remember what happened and how he came into contact with Lucy again. But essentially, when it... it, it I don't know. I, I guess the build-up to that point doesn't really matter. Essentially, he gets in contact with Lucy again. And, like, tells her about the Argas, which she already knows about. And, um, they eventually link it to an underground fight club where Pokemon battles are happening, and they shouldn't be. And it turns out that the Pikachu defeated that Charizard, and the Charizard want revenge. Yes, or more accurately, the Charizard's trainer wants revenge. I mean, look at that Charizard eyes. There's some... That Charizard wants the debt to be repaid. And it's really cool, too, because, like, at this... Like, in this scene, we get to see a Magikarp evolve in live action. <laughs> but, like, actual evolution in live action... That's kind of wild. That's that's sick. Actually, now you say I kind of want to rewatch that um, when we're done. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the Magikarp evolves into Gyarados and just fucking wrecks Charizard. Wow, it's almost like the tight matchup. And yeah, Gyarados, even is though. A fucking even though Pikachu should win that type matchup anyway, because flying type, but whatever. Well, I mean, but also Pikachu couldn't use its powers. You know, I guess when you have mass amnesia, you also forget how to use your own powers. <laughs> but yeah, um... They then link some this R stuff to Okay. Um I'll fill that with silence silence later. Yeah, please do. <laughs> I'll mark twenty-three. Anyway, um so they eventually link the uh R gas to um a, uh, they link it to some docks, and they go there, and they find this facility, um, which isn't on docks. I don't really quite get... I, I, I can't remember exactly what happened. I watched this movie over a week ago. Um, <laughs> but um, they're going through, and it's clearly an abandoned lab where apparently Mewtwo broke out of it. Um, but there's lots of Greninja hiding around. What are they eating? I don't know. So there's also there's also quite a few Torterra in the growth and, lab, which we yeah, see. Yeah, in the growth lab. Yeah, which we later realize. Oh wait, they're growing ginormous Torterra, so huge 
that I don't really believe it. I'm sorry. I don't really believe that nobody noticed these Torterra. I mean, they were um, sitting down before. And to be fair, they are in the middle of effing nowhere. No, that's. I, I think that still would have been noticed on like satellite footage or something. Like, I, I just don't buy it. Okay, first of all, they have Pokemon. Who's to say that there's even satellite footage? Do you see a GPS? They have cell phones. And? I mean... Uh, I mean how, I'm pretty sure... How do you know if they work exactly the same as our cell phones work? They have mythical but, Pokemon. They could be working through the remains of Mew for all we know. I'm pretty sure they have GPS because, to be quite honest with you, um, how the heck do all your little devices that you get throughout the Pokemon games know exactly where you are? I'm pretty sure that's just a map. I mean, in no, the original it's games. not. It, it, it's not just a map. It shows you exactly where you are. You can see where you are on the map. In, in, in some of the games, no, you can't. Um, but in quite a few of them, you can. Okay, um, have you ever thought about just knowing where you are? At least the character knows. Nah, sometimes the character literally has no clue where they are. Uh, I guess that is true. <laughs> Anyway, but, but that's besides the point, and my final argument on that is, um, I mean, it could just be a con giant conspiracy. Um, Either way, I don't, I, I don't buy it. I don't buy that nobody noticed these Torterra. I mean, the mayor Moving could on. literally just, you know, overwrite the um, data. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so basically, um. Doesn't Pikachu get hurt while they're trying to, you know, um, yes. and survive? Pikachu gets hurt, and I'll now say the best line in the entire movie, because a little bit before then, um, how can you de deny climate change now? Oh, yes, I love that. It's like, <laughs> it was... It, um, no, I think it was more like, um, at this point, how can you not believe in climate change? Oh, was that, was that, at this point, how can you not believe in climate change? <laughs> I love it's like, yeah. that was hilarious. Before they realized that like, they were on some giant Torterra, that was one of the funniest lines in the movie. I actually had to pause the movie and laugh at it. Pause it, too. I'm just like, <laughs> I was not, I did not see that coming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, the Pokemon company has never, ever gotten political. And that was... I, I just wasn't expecting it. Anyway. Um, but yeah, um, also, listeners out there. Listeners out there. If you don't believe in climate change, what the fuck is wrong with you? Open your goddamn eyes. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> Look, even Max from Camp Camp believes in climate change, okay? Okay, okay, but we're not covering Camp Camp yet. Well, I mean, in a few weeks. Soon, though. Soon, though. <laughs> um, soon, though, we will be covering Camp Camp. Look forward to that. Or don't. I don't care. <laughs> so now we go to where... Like, this is where I really noticed the quality of the movie. Is oh my god, I want a Bulbasaur. Yeah, I'm, it was Bulbasaur that led uh, Tim to the Mewtwo. They are so yeah, cute. Yeah, and there's there's really also fun. like tons of uh, there's tons of um, Morel just floating around too, which was really cool. It was nice to see a Gen 7 Pokemon, and I was like, oh, look, Gen 7. <laughs> And but, Mewtwo decides to play a memory and then gets cut off at the right moment to where I me mean, uh, misunderstood. <laughs> yeah. 
Wow, that is such a trope. I didn't even realize at the time. Yeah, because like at this point, we think, you know, Mewtwo betrayed Harry, and we think that, and not Mewtwo, we, at this point, we think Pikachu betrayed Harry, and that, like, um, we're also kind of thinking Mewtwo is um, not exactly all that good, but then Mewtwo gets captured. They don't really have much um, to contemplate on that. Yeah, and it's like, um, if you know anything about Mewtwo from past Pokemon movies, you know Mewtwo does not like to be captured. (laughs) And if you've seen videos on my channel, you know I caught a Mewtwo in in one ball. (laughs) Wow, Mewtwo's coming after you. Doesn't like to be captured. Oh, it's fine. It's a green one. I think it will understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> Seems legit. <laughs> but anyway, imagine um, just in one timeline they're cloning mute. It's like, why the frick is this one green? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. Like I, I, I kind of expected to see at least one shiny Pokemon, but we didn't. There are shiny Pokemon in the anime. Um, shiny Pokemon a few not times. in canon. Yeah, I guess shiny Pokemon don't exist. Um. <laughs> wow, well, we we run a server for that's a non exist for non existent Pokemon. Yeah, and I guess now that you mentioned it, I have to put that server link down in the description. If you're listening to this on YouTube anyway, if you're listening to this anywhere else, hello, future people. How's the weather? How's the economy? Did it crash yet? <laughs> oh, no, the economy's already crashed. <laughs> Did it crash again? <laughs> I mean, we're, re- we're recording this in late 2021. That The economy crashed. <laughs> Has it crashed anyway. more? <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so, um... I mean, it makes sense. I mean, this is a Pokemon-related podcast, so... a uh, Pokemon-related episode? There we go. <laughs> yeah, this isn't a Pokemon-related podcast, but this episode sure is. But, anyway, um... So... I'm trying to figure out how Pikachu realized that, um... He needed to run back and get go to Tim. Because it wasn't just, like, random emotions. He realized something. Because, um... I actually remember this moment. He saw a Greninja star, and he found out... And he realized Mewtwo wasn't one that caused the, the car to crash. It was the Greninja. Mewtwo just stopped the Greninja. And then he realized... Who else knows that? Because they have a hall of... You know, they can see everything in that scene. Oh, right. Yeah, because... Um, okay, so at this point, Tim is thinking that the mayor's... Was it his son? Mm-hmm. Is the real villain? Yeah. Because he was the one that captured Mewtwo? But it turns out it's actually the mayor himself. But also, Sun was an imposter. Because it was actually Ditto. And the real mayor's son is trapped in a closet. Huh. I think actually you uh, saw the- skipped over that, but that, like, that pieces everything together now. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh... Well, shit. <laughs> like, I... Like, that was the final puzzle piece needed to finally understand that scene. Yeah. But, um... Yeah, essentially the mayor has built this weird type of device that will basically allow his consciousness to take over Mewtwo, and he starts do, doing all kinds of screwed up shit where he makes other humans inhabit the bodies of Pokemon, which then, why can't they talk? 
I don't get it because okay, as soon as I saw that the first time, I was like, "Oh, Pikachu is Harry." <laughs> oh, I have no, I actually did not think that because <laughs> well, at the time yeah, I, I predi- didn't think. <laughs> yeah, I predicted that one immediately. Like immediately, as soon as they were like, "Oh." Pikachu has the power to make to transfer a human soul into a Pokemon. I'm like, oh, Pikachu is Harry. <laughs> like, well, see, I had no issue with Mewtwo talking because Mewtwo has always talked in the anime. You know, it's just his psychic power, I guess. I don't know. Well, I mean, most psychic Pokemon and legendary Pokemon are able to talk, and Mewtwo is both. Yeah, so I just imagine that Mewtwo is just using his psychic powers to talk. And that's about... That's all I imagine from that scene. But no, I think there were even times when the Mewtwo was moving its mouth to talk. There were certainly times... There were certainly times where it was telepathic, but I, I distinctly remember it moving its mouth to talk. It all sounded telepathic, at least. I mean, maybe that's just how Mewtwo just sounded in general. Because, damn, that does sound like a psychic Pokemon. But that's more going off of how it sounded than what it looked like. And, damn, that Wait. sounded very, um, like, psychic and transmitted through the mind. <laughs> but yeah um anyway uh basically tim has to fight off this mayor's ditto which why couldn't the ditto just transform into mewtwo um <laughs> but anyway uh he fights off the ditto successfully somehow um pikachu was involved a bit um Okay. And eventually, Tim takes off the um, the little gadget thing that the mayor has strapped to his physical body's head, and that breaks the connection between him and Mewtwo. So Mewtwo eventually takes over, and uh, Mewtwo kind of pissed. Yeah, Mewtwo kind of pissed, but his first thing he's got to do is save Pikachu because Pikachu is literally falling to his death. And then, um, you know, Mewtwo saves everybody and then um, is like, hey, I got to do this thing and basically takes Harry out of the Pikachu. And (laughs) uh, basically we uh, We get get like this really, yeah, we get their full memories and then we get we get this kind of touching moment between uh, Tim and Lucy where it's like, oh yeah, clearly there's something there. There's no kiss though, which, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of okay with. Hmm. Like, I don't know, maybe take things slow for once, children's movies. Hollywood, geez. Yeah, like, I'm kind of okay with this. <laughs> And they did meet, like, a few days ago, like. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely enough time to know that there are sparks going there. Um, (laughs) But, you know, anyway, let's, uh, continuing on, uh, basically, uh, Tim's about to go back home to his grandmother, and then he doesn't, and that's basically the movie. I mean, there was a there was a Mr. <laughs> yeah, there was a Mr. Mime at some point in there that we totally like left out when we were summarizing, but we talked about it at the beginning, and that was one of the funniest scenes in the movie. Oh my god, I remember the Mr. Mime. I loved the Mr. Mime scene, oh, and so you I... would think you would think a Mr. Mime would be terrifying. Like, in live action, but it wasn't. It was just funny. <laughs> no, I mean, I wouldn't say it's terrifying, but it definitely looked like um, 
If I saw a Mr. Mime that looked like that in a dark alley, I'm running because I feel like I just saw the Mafia. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, I found it hilarious as fuck, especially when it <laughs> got... Like, especially when, like, it had that terrified look on its face after um, Tim basically mimed dropping a match on some gasoline to kill him. (laughs) I was like, okay, Pokemon, you went there. But then again, then again, like, we had... (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And also, there was no actual match or gasoline or fire or anything. It was just miming. But, that, I mean... That Mr. Mime's still gonna blow up, though. <laughs> they also, like, implied... Like, in, in literally one of the Pokemon games, they literally implied that a certain character was abused as a child. So, you never know at this point. <laughs> like... I, not not just abused as a child, but literally beaten with golf clubs. Why specifically golf clubs? <laughs> but yeah, like it was kind of, it kind of shocked to me when I saw that. I was like, "What the fuck? This isn't a kids' game. No, this I, is a game for like ten year olds. What are you doing?" <laughs> I mean, this movie, you know, meant for freaking tendrils, you know, pouring imaginary, mind you, gasoline on a person to get him to talk. Don't tell me that Mr. Mime is a person. Still not cool, but he's not a person. <laughs> I mean, okay, replace that with any person. That'd probably be against the law under the... Um... I'm pretty sure it's against the law, even if it's an animal. I don't think it'd be very effective if it was an animal. I would be a very ineffective um, interrogation method. Because they can't talk. <laughs> Neither can the Mr. Mime. It's a mime. Yeah, but you don't have a convenient um, Pikachu to um, summarize everything it's saying. Well, okay, but actually, the like the Pikachu and Tim were both um, like trying to figure out what the mime was saying oh, at yeah. the same time. Oh, right, because it wasn't actually um, talking yet, because it doesn't talk. It was yeah. miming. So I guess <laughs> I forgot that in that moment, Tim could also uh, see what I was saying. And, you know, it's kind of interesting, too, that um, the mime, like the Mr. Mime, it appears to have intelligence, Whereas many of the other Pokemon we see don't. But then remember, Mr. Mime is a psychic, is a psychic type. <laughs> so it's like, yep, that tracks. Psychic types are really smart, guys. And then, you know, like, like I said, most psychic types and legendaries can talk and possess intelligence. Of course. Um... And, then, and, and, and then there's Lucario. Um <laughs> Why not? <laughs> and it's just like aura, aura. Like Lucario talks about aura, like Zuko talks about honor. <laughs> <laughs> if we ever cover the Lucario movie, that's gonna be something that you will see firsthand. Lucario over there. I think it's your honor. I think it's your aura. <laughs> but yeah um so like i said before uh earlier i don't know if you're able to watch this movie anywhere um you always buy it work up the yeah, money <laughs> yeah to me buy it <laughs> buy it if you want to watch this movie i don't care um <laughs> all right so now we've got to rate it what is your rating lily Oh, God, put me on the spot like that. Um, yes, I'm putting you on the spot. You know, um, this movie obviously beat my expectation. My, I'll be kind of low expectation when it came out. Um, so, even then, though, it, 
it really opens the door of, I really want Pokemon in real life now, and looks exactly like that. So I guess... You know what? I'll suck her up an 8.5 for that. Yeah, um... I was... Cons- I- I'm still kind of considering where in the 8s it goes for me, because it is somewhere in the 8s. Hmm. I think I'm going to give it an 8.3. Okay. And it's only that low because there are other movies that I think deserve to be higher than it. Makes sense. Yeah. So that's about it for this episode of um, From the Closet. But real quick, before we go, we have to spin the wheel again. Um, and if it's another one of my movies, I think I'm going to flip a chair. <laughs> well, let's see if it is. Um, <laughs> so, next week, you guys should get whatever movie this wheel lands on. And then the week after that, Frick, what movie did we say we were covering for Christmas? Was it the Polar Express? I think it was. I think it was. Yeah, I think it was the Polar Express. Well, no, we'll, co- the we'll Polar cover. Express. <laughs> yeah, now that we said it, we have to do the Polar Express Christmas week. It'll be the Monday of that week. I know Christmas is on a Saturday, but we're not doing it the Monday after Christmas. So, okay. wait, let me, sorry, let me just clarify. So, the 20th of Monday, that will be, um, that is, um, Polar Express, and then the 27th, that will be Camp Camp. Uh, yes, yes. Makes sense, okay. Just make okay. sure I have that right. Yeah, so now we spin the wheel of movies, which you guys can't see. I can't but I don't see. care. <laughs> Finally, we cover a Marvel movie. <laughs> Iron Man. So if you don't know, we're going to go through the entire um, Marvel movies series, like the entire MCU one movie at a time and is just reached the first one yeah (laughs) and it's like uh, eventually we're covering every single mcu movie not every single marvel movie because that would just take way too long and a lot of them are trash um (laughs) so and and all mcu movies and um you know truth i don't we're gonna we're gonna aim for it but it's how slow we're been doing and how fast the Marvel has been producing. Well, there's practically no chance that we get caught up to be covering movies as they're coming out. Um, not even close. But we'll yeah, try. N- no chance. <laughs> no chance. Um, but yeah, um, kind of excited now that uh, I get to make you watch Iron Man. I, okay, I have watched, I was a little bit of Iron Man, you know, just here and there. Never actually sat down. That's the main thing with me in live-action superhero movies. I've never watched the full thing sitting down. Oh, you know, funny thing, I just remembered, this isn't our first Marvel movie. Right. Well, but that's (laughs) not part of the MCU. No, Planet Hulk was not part of the MCU, but it'll be our first MCU movie, finally. So, really cool. Look forward to that, guys. And that is about it. I have been Avery. That over there has been Lily, you know, the one over there on the left. Um, (laughs) And uh, we'll see you tomorrow for Back to the Future Part 2. Bye. Bye.